All right, we're just going to do a quick run through of the front end code uh, written in React and using near API JS uh, in order to interact with uh, the contract that uh, we built on the on the back end. Uh, so this this is it here, um, and we'll go through this here in a, a little bit of detail. So starting off, uh, it's isn't going to be a, a React tutorial. Um, it's much better people that can uh, teach that than I can. Uh, but this will get us uh, working enough with the contract. So we just do a, a couple of import statements uh, that get React working. Uh, then we pull in the near API GS and store it and uh, all the all the methods on it. As well, we pull in a couple of specific things like browser local storage key store, and then we access key pair and memory memory signer and uh, parse near mount format near mount some things that we're going to use off near API GS uh, in the code here. Uh, we also pull in the config file um, and pull some things off of it, like the network ID, node URL, and wallet URL. And those are coming uh, straight out of the config file here, which is in uh, there. And it just shows you how to, or gives, a, gives us some connection information uh, uh, for it to, to work. And we're using the, the testnet uh, parameters here. Uh, which will um, help us uh, with our connections. So moving back uh, to app.js, um, scroll down a little bit. Uh, we're setting an entry fee for our competition of two near, and note that it's a, a string. Uh, that'll be important when we're we're parsing the near amount, uh, so that we send the right um, denomination to the contract. It needs to uh, accept Yocto. And uh, parsing the near amount, we'll, we'll turn this two into uh, two with a uh, 24 zeros uh, at the end of it to, to go to the contract. Next, uh, we open up the app, and we're using React's uh, state uh, use state in order to keep track of uh, some things here. So basically, these are just setting um, a state variable, uh, and this is a function that lets us change it uh, throughout. Uh, so these are different things that uh, will show up uh, a little bit later on. We use the React use effect, um, I guess it's a hook, um, to uh, on when we load up the, the component for the first time uh, to uh, load in some, some data to populate uh, the app. And uh, then anytime any of these state variables change, it'll, it'll recall them to, to, to make an update. So these are the, the functions that uh, We'll go through here uh, fairly quickly that we, that we wrote um, in order to interact with the with the back end. Uh, the first three here are basically setting access key um, access keys. Uh, so we'll take a look at the first one: use full access key. Um, and what we're doing in this first part here is looking in our environment file um, for the private key of the current user account. Uh, so just a switch statement. It's uh, looking at uh, whatever the current account is and the account ID on that, and then matching uh, matching them up. So if we're logged in as player one, it's getting the player one private key, player two, player two, player three, player three, and so on and so forth. Um, from that, uh, we generate a key pair from, from that that user's private key. We load up a signer uh, based on that key pair, and that's the, the signer that'll be used to sign the transaction to add keys to, to, the, to the account. Uh, from there, uh, we create a, a connection to near the, using the, the signer's key store. Um, and then we load up the, the account object um, using, using that connection in that key store. And finally, uh, we can then load uh, the appropriate contract and tie it to this account object, uh, exposing the, the view methods and change methods uh, that are on the contract. Uh, we'll set the state variable on the contract so it's successful, and then set the key type to say full access so that gives us some information on screen, and then return that, that contract object. I'm just gonna close this one back up. Um, so the next two functions are very similar to that. Um, use contract full access key, just instead of looking for uh, the private uh, or the player's uh, 
private key and matching up the, the current user with the, the player. This instead just goes and grabs the, the contract's private key, access the vital point .testnet, um, so that uh, we can create a signer uh, for the contract to send uh, near from the contract uh, to, to a user. And otherwise it's exactly the same as the, the full access. Except the only uh, methods we're going to expose for this one are, are these ones here, withdraw winnings and reset, because that's all it needs to really interact with, and it, uh, it'll go from there. Uh, a function access key uh, limits uh, some of the, the functions that are, are accessible. Uh, so basically, this is going to We'll come back to this probably because what's going to happen, yeah, I'll, I'll just skip over this one for a second and, and we'll come back to it. So when we set a player's account function call access key uh, with this, with this statement, again, we need to get the player's private key um, for, that, for that account in order to add keys to the account because uh, it's one of the... Uh, seven primitives and it requires a full access key adding keys so it's the same same scenario we generate a key pair load in a signer connect to it get the account object uh, tied to it uh, but at that point instead of using that full access key uh, what we're going to do is generate a new key pair uh, from random store it in the browser's local storage um, giving it this uh, this prefix of competition so we can find it again. And here's where it's getting set in the, the browser local storage. Uh, we set the net method names on the contract that we want this key to be able to access. Uh, we put them in an array here. Uh, so this key is going to be able to enter the competition, withdraw winnings, and reset things. Uh, we set an allowance for how much near it can use uh, per transaction. and uh, this parse near amount again uh, turns this this string into uh, a near into Yocto, so adding 24 zeros or moving the decimal place 24 zeros to the right. Uh, we then put an array of actions uh, together, and we can string a whole bunch of these actions together as many as, as we really wanted. Um, uh, in this case, all we want to do is add a key. Uh, so it's this is pulled out of near API JS transactions add key. Uh, we add and it consists of the the public key from the newly generated key pair that we we generated, uh, followed by uh, the function call access key with the function call access key permissions, uh, pointing to the receiver ID being the contract that we want to work with, uh, the method names that we uh, identified that we want this key to have access to and how much near it's allowed to spend in the allowance. Once that's all set, uh, it's all generated and good to go. Uh, we can call the sign and send transaction on the, the account. And because we're using the full access uh, signer for, for this account, uh, we can send this transaction, sign it and send it, and a key is going to get added. Now, the function use the function call or function access key method to, will make a little more sense because instead of going and finding the private key and generating key pairs and loading up a, a full access signer, instead we're going to go to the key store that we we put together with the browser local storage um, in the in the last step, find the key that we just set uh, with competition, and then use that key uh, to generate the signer. And that way, it's using a access key uh, that is a function call access key, not a, not a full access key. And again, it, uh, it can use any of the, the methods that are exposed. Now, the, the ac function call access uh, keys are pertain mostly to the change methods. Uh, anytime you have view methods, uh, they can be called by any anyone it doesn't matter what kind of access key they have uh, it's just uh, the change methods that are, are controlled by what's on the, the function access uh, the function call permission um, so we'll close that one up uh, so we're going to uh, 
uh, set player three here, we're going to give them uh, a different access uh, key uh, just to demonstrate the ability to, to limit uh, limit control. So all they're going to have be able to do is uh, steal steal winnings after after we give them or not all that they're going to have, be able to do, we're going to give them the additional ability to steal winnings um, at some point in our application. Uh, changing account. Uh, so, so normally, uh, if you've interacted with any apps on, on Near yet, uh, typically you're going to get uh, sent to the Near wallet to authorize the app to to uh, to, to interact with it. Uh, with your account, um, but uh, in this case, want to demonstrate the, these access keys and how keys are added and that sort of thing. So um, we're not going to be logging in with the the, the near wallet. Instead, we're we're going to be switching back and forth from accounts. And this is uh, this change account function um, takes the the player account that we want uh, as a parameter, and then uh, switches everything to, to use that account and uh, resets a few things in the meantime. So for instance, if we want to be player one, we call the change account player one with sending in player one, it'll switch to their account, uh, hook them up to hook them up to the contract um, where they can access all this stuff, assuming that their, their access key is good to go. And then, uh, and then they can interact with the app as player one. And we can do that for player two and player three as well. Now, in terms of actually using the app, so entering the competition, uh, this simply, first off, uh, entering the competition requires uh, a full access key uh, because you're sending uh, near from your account to, to the contract. And that transfer is one of the, the seven primitives. Um, or seven actions that uh, that accounts can do, uh, but it requires a full access key. So first thing we do is we we switch to a full access key and send back the contract uh, that's attached uh, to the that full access account, and and then they can uh, call it and enter the competition, um, sending in a default gas value, and then parsing the the entry fee, which if you recall was a uh, was two, um, and then add 24 zeros to that by the parse near amount method. And uh, that will that will uh, fire off that, that function or that method in, in the backend contract. And if it's successful, it'll come back, it'll set the, the state variable entered to true, and it'll change the account um, back to player one. Um, in reality, we're, we're still player one, but what this will do is it'll change it back to a function call access and uh, remove the, the full access key ability at this point. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, withdraw winnings. Uh, for whoever wins the competition, they'll, they'll click a button there. And again, you're going to need a full access key here because uh, this time we're, we're transferring near from the contract to, to the winner. Uh, so, in in this instance, we need the contract's full access key. If you remember in the last one, we used the used the function use full access key. This one's different, and that we're using contract full access key. And the only difference is that we are using using the the contract's private key uh, to send sign and send the transaction. Uh, so we send in the player, uh, and then we get the, the current value of the prize pool and attach that as a, as a deposit and uh, fire that off. And then when it comes back, it's good to go. Uh, we set the prize pool, which will be back to zero. And then we reset the game uh, by removing each of these players using the reset method in the, in the contract, removing them from the, the per, per persistent map showing them that they have not entered competition, allowing them then to play again. Close that one up. Uh, C winnings is just accessing that, uh, that view method on the contract, just calling it and getting the result and then plugging in the state variable. Steal, 
same thing just calling that uh, it's a change method on the contract so only the people that have access to this in their in their function call access keys are going to be able to do this uh, but they'll they'll call the contract and, and get the result which is, and finally reset which if you recall this is last part of the withdraw uh, winnings uh, function up here um, and it just again resets uh, resets the game so pulls each of the players out of the persistent map on the the back end and uh, allows people to to re-enter the competition or the game to start again and all that uh, this return piece here uh, in, in the component this is what gets uh, displayed on the screen it's JSX um, look which looks a lot like HTML and uh, it's just a uh, it's just how React uh, React works. So um, this is our, our status window, um, and basically we're seeing if there's values in the current account. And it's, these are just calling the the state variables that that we have set um, throughout, and then displaying that information on the screen. These are the buttons uh, that we'll be clicking: assign player access, entering the competition, viewing the winnings. And they're all just tied to each of the different functions uh, so that we have some functionality to interact with our contract on the back and um, changing players come player one player two player three and then below we just have uh, some some instructions on on how to how to interact with it uh, so that's uh, basically the front end and uh, we'll see how that uh, works when we get the app uh, loaded up